So remember last week when I was telling you about my friend and how she was um, going to go and buy that dress that she thought was so yep, perfect. Yep. And um, so we, anyway, we made a date to go and have lunch and go purchase the dress. Mm -hmm. And that's what's coming up on next Thursday. So I just want to make sure there's no yep. con conflict with Touchdown! Welcome to date night. I am Mike Yoakum and this is my lovely trophy bride, Linda. In tonight's Devo, we'll be sharing about communication. Good communication is absolutely necessary in any relationship. Whether dating, newly married, or married for 50 plus years. We're going to share about three communication killers. The first one is failure to listen. James 1.19 says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Communication is a two-way street. It is more than saying what we want to say. It requires listening as well. We can be great listeners when the subject interests us. When it doesn't, we tend to tune out. This frustrates the speaker and leads to resentment. Failure to listen is fail, failure to show love and respect. I can listen to get what I think is enough information, and then I stop listening because I have formed my own opinion. I stop listening, and my mind jumps ahead and immediately gives what I think is the answer. In defense of men everywhere, though, men and women's communication styles differ greatly. For example, Men like to get on a train of thought and, and like to ride that train of thought to its logical conclusion. Women, on the other hand, can start on one train of thought, jump to another train of thought, and to another train of thought, and back to the original train of thought, and not think anything of it. That's just normal. But this confuses men greatly. But that's not an excuse not to listen. It's better to ask for clarification. Again, this is a generality. Uh, men, all men and women aren't the same, but as a general uh, idea, this, this, this tends to hold true. There is much wisdom in this verse. We should be quick to listen. Trying to hear the heart, not just the words, but the thoughts and the needs that are behind the words being communicated. Slow to speak means we should think before we speak. We should filter our responses through scriptures before we speak and be even slower to anger. Anger is a sign that some need is not being met or a sign of defensiveness. Feeling anger should be a red flag and you should stop and evaluate what's going on in you to see what's in your heart. What is causing these emotions? Number two, defensive listening. Proverbs 18, 13. He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. Defensive listening is forming your rebuttal or defense instead of focusing on what the other person is saying. It can also include finishing their sentence for them, which is rude and arrogant. The root of this problem is pride. We get defensive because we assume, at least most of the time, that we are right. There is a saying that goes along with this. Don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is made up. You need to take time to consider that your spouse may have some great insights, even a better idea. You need to remember that defensiveness breeds defensiveness. This degenerates from communication to verbal jousting. This is where we practice the slow to speak part. If you are truly listening to what is being communicated, then you're not formulating a response, especially a defense, while they are talking. You should pause once the other person has stopped speaking before you speak in order to process. Do I understand what they are communicating? Do I need to ask more questions? If so, do. It shouldn't be a de debate. It's the sharing of hearts and thoughts. Number three, disrespect of a viewpoint. 
Proverbs 18.2 A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in hearing his own opinion. Many of us have the attitude that we are always right. That would be me. That we know more than anyone else, especially more than our spouses. We jump to conclusions. We can also contradict and correct our spouses, often in front of others. We say things like, what she really means is, or forgive my husband, he is so... This is so rude and demeaning. It shows an attitude of disrespect to your spouse. This communication flaw is what destroys, not builds up your spouse. We may need to have this flaw pointed out to us, as we are usually blind to our own faults. Maybe, maybe that's a good subject for a D-time. This one is easy to be blind to. We may think it was an innocent remark, but it wasn't to the receiver. The Bible tells us to build each other up. These remarks can be painful, and we can be guilty of this on both sides. So it takes humility to ask each other to help you in this area. We've been married for close to 46 years, and we have not perfected communication. We still fail at communication from time to time. But our lives are so much richer when we communicate well. Good communication is key to a happy marriage. As you go out on your date night, take some time to reflect on these three areas of communication. How well are you communicating? Be honest and be humble. Better go have some fun. Have a good night.